what I had one thing that was very annoying it's the boom I am I really wanted the boom a little bit longer Good day everybody and uh, welcome back to DX Explorer for one more video. Uh, I'm late with this video but uh, um, well things got a little crazy lately. It's uh, fall time so that means a lot of preparations for winter and uh, yeah not much time for the hobby. But anyway I'm back with the Yagi antenna that I just finished building. Unfortunately, I wanted to film this video outside because I have a lot more space, but it's raining and it keeps raining every time I want to film. Um, it's done. It's done and I'm going to talk uh, just a little bit um, about the the way I build the antenna and how things worked. Because I ran into some issues. The design that I picked, it was from uh, Delta Kilo 7 Zulu Bravo. Um, from qsl.net I think I've, I've got the, the project uh, but I'm gonna write a detailed article on the blog about this particular one that I built uh, following the instructions that I found there uh, <clears throat> the only thing is that there was a couple of uh, things that I could not find in the exact uh, antenna that I wanted to build on that page and I was idiot enough not to look back and find uh, on the on the other um, antennas I could find the information that I needed at first and uh, and I didn't know so I did a couple of things uh, wrong at first and I had a really really high SWR on the 70 centimeters and if it was not high on 70 centimeters and it was okay then it would be uh, messed up on two meters so uh, yeah, basically the whole antenna build. I'm going to be very, very short with this video. I'm going to put all the, the details that you need to build it in um, in the article because it's, you know, it's a lot of measurements and stuff like that. But um, it's really straightforward, very, very easy to build. There's no headaches, especially if you follow the instructions. At the end, you're going to have a, a really, really nice SWR, both on, on uh, 2 meters and also on 70 centimeters. Um, I didn't have much time to test it, but I already made one, one uh, QSO, a satellite QSO. Yankee Oscar 6, Delta X-Ray Echo, CQSAT. Yankee Oscar 6, Delta X-Ray Echo, this is Delta 9, And I was not even expecting to, uh, to be heard, to be honest, with my Baofeng, but uh, it worked. So uh, yeah, um, I'm gonna make another video about uh, using the antenna, uh, making QSOs, uh, probably for next week if I have enough time and it's not raining outside. But uh, yeah, what I had, one thing that was very annoying is the boom. I, um, I really wanted the boom a little bit longer uh, so I can hold it with my hand from here and also um, when I'm planning to put it up on a pole or something, I just wanted to use this point uh, to to uh, install the antenna. But uh, I ended up thinking that I might uh, use this point, which is actually the center of gravity. And um, instead of a metallic pole, I'm just going to use something like a plastic or wood or whatever, something that is not conductive and it would not influence the, the antenna. Um, to be honest, the SWR so far, it doesn't seem to be very influenced. Uh, I've been holding the antenna from here uh, and uh, also from, from here and uh, the SWR doesn't seem to change and also it doesn't seem to influence in any way uh, when you're transmitting or receiving. Uh, I've tested that because that's how I made my, my first QSO. <laughs> I was actually uh, holding the antenna from here. It's quite heavy. Um, I was not expecting it to be so heavy, but I think that's because of the, the box that I have in here. It's made out of uh, eight millimeters plexiglass. So it ended up being a little bit heavy. And also the, uh, how you call it, this plastic, well, not plastic, it's also plexiglass. Um, um, the spacers from the boom to the elements. I also made them from, from plexiglass. It was quite, I, uh, 
that was actually the part that took me the longest is to build this uh, this um, spacers uh, to cut the boom well the boom was already cut one meter that's all i had and it was perfect fit because <laughs> i could use probably one centimeter longer but uh, well um, i have to deal with what i with what i have the elements are the whole antenna it's made from um, 10 millimeters elements uh, in diameter and uh, the driven element it's made and it's very very important it's made out of uh, 12 millimeters um, uh, aluminum tubing uh, the box it's very very straightforward I'm going to film a video and put it on top of this one while I'm talking um, you could use something lighter but I wanted something strong just because I wanted to hold these elements really really uh, strong because I, I know I'm going at some point I'm going to install this antenna outside and uh, here in Romania in particular uh, the winters are not very uh, antenna friendly <laughs> to say so um, it's quite windy in, in this particular place where I live and uh, there's a lot of snow sometimes so I just wanted to make sure the antenna is uh, very strong and it will uh, hold well in bad weather so the mistake that I've made uh, it's about the coil, the coil inside, the, the RF choke. Um, when I've made it, I don't know where I've read that it has to be 20 millimeters in diameter and about 4 tons of uh, 50 ohm coax cable. So I've done it that way and I just couldn't tune the antenna. Uh, it doesn't matter uh, how I did it. And before realizing what I actually have to do the, the way the right way that I have to do the RF choke I ended up uh, listening to some advice from people because you know that's that's the best way you learn usually and they asked me if uh, it was not basically it was not resonating or where it should be and they asked me that uh, in order to uh, get the antenna to resonate what I wanted I had to uh, cut short about five millimeters from each side uh, from the driven element so I've done it and of course it was still far away from from the center frequency that I needed and then I said no it has to be something else <laughs> and then I thought about uh, the RF choke and I thought um, maybe if I put one turn less it would influence it so I did that and it didn't work uh, the SWR was actually worse and um, then I've put one turn more so I had five turns and that seemed to bring the, the antenna a little bit closer to, to the center frequency that uh, I needed and also the SWR was a little lower but still far away from, from perfect. So I left it for a couple of days and uh, I said ah, I'm just gonna calm down and then trying to find out what was the issue. And the issue was that the diameter of the RF choke is supposed to be uh, 20 now I forget 25 millimeters or 26 millimeters I'm gonna put it on the blog on the blog post anyway but yeah uh, the diameter was uh, very different I think it's 25 millimeters yeah if I remember well so I've done it that way uh, five turns on a 25 millimeters uh, PVC pipe and uh, believe me the SWR dropped and the center frequency was spot on exactly where I needed it to be the issue that I had it was that now my elements were a lot shorter so <coughs> in order to bring the antenna back on, on that center frequency that I needed I had to uh, the, the space between these two elements right I'm gonna show you a close up but the space between these two elements it has to be one uh, centimeter which is 10 millimeters and uh, in order to extend uh, the driven element uh, out enough to, to bring the antenna back on the center frequency they're supposed to have, uh, I had to extend the space here in between, which also ended up um, getting me, giving me a little bit higher SWR, uh, not really high, it's acceptable still, but uh, it's a little bit higher than it, uh, it should be. And uh, yeah, so 
I'm going to replace these elements at some point. I ran out of 12 millimeters uh, aluminum pipe, but I'm going to buy a new one and I'm going to uh, <laughs> put the proper ones back and then insulate everything and I'm ready to install it outside on, uh, on a rotator or whatever. I'll decide later on. For now I'm playing around with satellites for it. <clears throat> but uh, yeah, that, that was a big, big issue. Um, I really had to uh, I do these adjustments uh, and uh, yeah, it has actually, it's my first Yagi antenna that I've ever built, except those that I used to build uh, years back for TVs and <laughs> stuff like that. But um, yeah, I, I really, I was really looking forward to finish this one and I said if this one works well, I'm going to keep it for my home because as you can tell, I built it very, very rough. Uh, the elements are very, very secure in here. Um, and I will secure it even more before I put it up. But uh, I want to build a lighter version, uh, something probably the, the boom will be from a PVC pipe and uh, uh, a reinforced PVC pipe. I'm going to put two PVC pipes, one inside the other one, uh, just to make it thicker. And uh, it's still going to be light enough. And then the elements will be a lot thinner. So also the dimensions for the elements will be different. But if you follow the instructions that you can find on the on the page from um, from the website where I found the the instructions for this one, um, I have no doubt that uh, you will succeed and you will end up with a really really nice antenna so yeah I'm very happy uh, to be honest I, I doubt a little bit at the beginning that it might not work uh, quite well but uh, it ended up uh, being very very uh, nice and I'm really really happy about how it works so I have to say thank you for the beautiful instructions um, Oh, um, I had somebody, I can't remember, I'm really, really sorry, but I've been so busy lately, my memory is going away. Uh, somebody asked me um, if the reason of the bad SWR that I had at the beginning when I didn't know the dimension, the proper dimensions for the RF choke, they asked me if the reason might be that I installed the BNC on the side and not on the back of the box. And I tried that. Uh, I moved the whole thing in the back and it was no uh, no change at all. So yeah, if I put it on the side, there's really, really no influence at all. And the reason I put it this way is because I thought that if I'm going to put the, the pole here that will hold the antenna up in the air, I'm just going to run the coax cable through that one and I hope that will not influence the antenna in a bad way. But uh, yeah. Um, I'm not going to stay to do the, the SWR measurements right now. Um, probably I'm going to either put pictures on the blog post later on, uh, probably next week. I'm going to write the blog post now and, and put it on the on the website this weekend uh, when I have a little time because tomorrow is my, my nephew's birthday, birthday and the day after tomorrow on the 4th is my birthday. So we're going to be a little bit busy with that. but. Um, I'll try to make some time and, and write the blog post about the antenna so I have all the details in there and um, yeah uh, next week for sure I'm going to try to do some sat like USOs and put the, the video on YouTube and I'll also do the SWR measurements outside hopefully I get some better weather uh, better weather uh, by then and uh, yeah we'll see i tried i tried these days to go outside and and uh, film a little bit more and do some more um some qsos that i wanted to include in this video but no luck and uh yeah i've been quite busy had to help a little bit my my sister and my brother-in-law with their stuff and uh yeah i had to deal with a lot of stuff for myself as well so it's a little time uh, yeah, anyway, um, I guess this is it for, for today. I'm really, really sorry. There's really short video. I could have filmed this one uh, the last week, but I had no time. And I was also, yeah, I was really hoping for some good weather so I can do a QSO or two. But uh, yeah, anyway, um, build it. Build it if you want to get into satellites because uh, it works really, really nice. And it's quite easy. It's really easy to build. And to be honest, I don't think it's very expensive either. I think maybe 20 bucks, uh, all the materials, 
uh, cost me to build this antenna. Um, except the PVC, uh, the um, sorry, the plexiglass that I had from a long, long time ago, and I was keeping it to make antenna insulators. But uh, yeah, it turned out to be very, very useful. So. Uh, yeah, looking forward for the next video uh, next week uh, to see you and uh, we'll do some satellite QSOs. What can I say? I'm sorry I'm late. Um, yeah, I live in the countryside so right now it's quite busy uh, because the, the winter it's, it's nearly here. Uh, the fall is going to go away uh, very very quick. I know that from, from the last two years that I've been home and um, yeah, it's gonna get cold so I must get ready for that. But <clears throat> when the winter comes, the good news is that I'm going to have a lot of time to mess around with this kind of projects. I'm going to stay inside and build a lot of uh, little tiny projects, transceivers, transmitters and whatever I, I want to build. And um, I have a lot of friends that uh, started to send me parts. So I'm going to collect everything, every package that I receive. And thank you so much for, for that. I'm going to collect all the packages and uh, then I'm going to plan a couple of videos and uh, start filming when the weather will be like right now and I can't be outside. Right now I'm trying to also work when I have a little time. I'm not filming that but I'm, I'm trying to work outside and improve my antennas a little bit, do the proper measurements and stuff just because I know uh, when the winter comes uh, I'm not going to stay outside uh, freezing my back. Uh, to to work on antennas so yeah anyway thanks for watching for today um, maybe tomorrow evening I'm going to post the blog post about uh, the antenna I'm going to post pictures and detailed information uh, so yeah if you want to build it just follow the instructions over there and uh, I'm pretty sure you'll succeed and end up with a really really nice antenna so until next week thank you for watching and 73